The game is finally starting to take shape, thanks to the addition of some basic interactivity. But at this point it isn't really fun. That's because there's no real way to win or lose yet. In fact, there are no game rules at all. We're going to need to find a way for our four reactor cores to work together and to enforce some game rules to make the game fun. So to accomplish this, we're going to create an overseer object. A sort of manager object that will keep track of the clock, keep the player's score, detect wins or losses, and tell the reactor cores when they should move. Using an overseer class like this is one approach. You could also try to handle all of your high-level control within each reactor core so that they coordinate their own actions. But that's prone to all kinds of unforeseen interactions, what we call edge cases. Take keeping score, for example. We want to score a point whenever a player clicks on a reactor core, but without an overseer to keep the score, we'd have to have the reactor cores talk amongst themselves and somehow determine what the final and valid score should be. That sort of work is possible, but when the task at hand is a known problem, that is, when you understand the constraints you're working within, there's really no point to that sort of extra complexity. Think of our overseer as a store manager that makes sure the employees stay on task. Building something like that might sound daunting, but Unity makes this pretty easy too. Let's get started, shall we? First, let's start by creating a new game object and naming it Overseer. Next, let's child our reactor cores to the Overseer object by dragging them into it. Now, we'll create a new C-sharp script in the project and name it Overseer. Finally, we'll drag the Overseer script onto the Overseer object to add the component to the game object. Now that the Overseer object is roughly set up in Unity, we need to write code that will manage the four reactors. So we'll first open it in MonoDevelop. Then we're going to add a line telling Unity that we want to use the systems.collections.generic library here at the top of the file. Next, we'll add a public list variable to hold our reactor cores. We'll call it reactor cores. I'm also going to add a boolean called managing, which we can use just to keep track of what the overseer is doing. Now we're going to add a method to randomly select from one of the reactor cores in the list, basically a selection algorithm. And I'm going to paste that into the end of the file here. Finally, we'll use the overseer start method to put all four cores in the down position. And we'll do that by adding a quick clause into the start routine, just like so. Okay. Now we want the overseer to pick a core randomly and raise it now that they're all down. So to do that, first we're going to create a new coroutine called manage reactors. And we'll do that by adding the following method to the end of the file. Coroutine is a type of method that can sort of run itself in the background. It's not exactly accurate. What it really does is it can run a piece of itself and then tell Unity to go off and do other things for a while before coming back and finishing up. In our case, we tell Unity to let the coroutine pause for between 1.6 and 2.3 seconds, which is this line here, while Unity goes off and does other work. And then when it comes back, it'll actually select a random core and raise it. Finally, now that the coroutine is in, we can call it from the update routine by adding some more code. And this is actually where that managing boolean that I mentioned earlier comes in. So we'll check, and if we're not managing, that is, if managing is set to false, then we will start the coroutine, manage reactors. Okay, now all that's left to do is to go back to Unity. We're going to finish wiring up our overseer. You'll notice there is this new reactor core's entry in the component with a size of zero. This is a list, but it's empty right now, so let's fill it with our reactor cores. There's easy ways to do this in hard ways. Let's go with the easy way. See this lock up here? When you press this, it freezes the inspector into this view, which means that we can now go collect our reactor cores here and just drag them right into the list. Just like that. Now all we have to do is save, and when we hit play, we should see that we have a basic whack-a-mole game loop. Not bad, right? We've taken your animating reactor cores, and we've connected them to the Overseer, a component we wrote to manage the overall game. By doing so, we've made a completely functional whack-a-mole game loop. Next, we'll discuss more advanced ways to communicate between objects in our Pro Tips section, specifically messaging systems. Good luck!